Hello Conference Family! Good morning po sa inyong lahat! Ito ang araw na tayo po ay nagkakatipon-tipon para sa gawain ng ating Panginoon. Are you excited to worship God? The Bible said, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generation. Indeed, we are worshiping a good and faithful God. So today, let us ask our worship team to lead us to worship the living God. Let us sing songs of praise. Thousands of times I have till your mercy remains. But should I stumble again, I'm praying your grace never lasts. Your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond.
my heart and my soul. I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and grace become my embrace to love you from the Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, worship team. You are all blessed. Thank you so much. Well, good morning again, Compraise family. Good morning, friends. Good morning, world. Thank you for joining us today in our worship celebration. God is a good God. Today, we celebrate Father's Day. Amen? So, let us join together in honoring all our fathers. This is again your friend Pastor Doms bringing you the good news of the Word of God. Truly, God has a wonderful message for us today. Amen. And I am humbled and excited to share God's Word today because we are His people and He loves us so much. But before I share God's Word, let us come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. We honor you, we worship you, and bless your name. Thank you for your anointed word. Speak to us and transform us through your word today. I pray that you will find faith in our hearts as we listen to your word. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom and understanding and to powerfully minister to us in a very special way i pray this with thanksgiving in jesus name and everybody said amen and amen glory to god well happy father's day to all our fathers salat ng tatay happy father's day po thank you for all that you do for us we love you and we appreciate all your works and all your ministry. Indeed, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. And at the end of the service, I would like to offer a prayer for all of you, for all our fathers, for our family, and for all our listeners. So today, let's take time off from our spiritual warfare or armor of God series and let's honor our father. Amen. So today, as Father's Day, God has a special message about the great love of the Father. Anyway, once a year lang naman ito, kaya let us honor ang mga tatay ng tahanan. Amen. Well, I'm so excited to share this message and I thank God for His grace and for this opportunity to share God's Word. You know, lahat tayo ay pinagpala ng mga magagaling na tatay meaning our earthly father who despite their imperfection God used them mightily to pray to provide and to prepare us for the challenges of life and to what we have become now Amen? That's why let us honor our dad pasalamatan po natin sila sa kanilang buhay 
truly together with my brothers and sisters. There are seven of us. We were blessed with an amazing father. Though he is not with the Lord, I thank God that I still remember all the good works, all the things that he had done for us as a family. My father was orphaned at an early age of, I think, seven or nine during World War II. At bilang panganay, siya ang nag-alaga sa tatlong survivors niyang mga kapatid. Ano? Our father was a hardworking, responsible, disciplinarian, but kind and God-fearing man. Of course, needless to say, he has good looks. Like me. O di ba? Obvious ba? Well, he only managed to finish his elementary grade. And I was told he was good in math. Ah, uh, hindi ko yata minana yun. Ano? Siya ay naging isang magaling na magsasaka. A skilled carpenter. A tricycle driver. And operator. He and my mother came from a very poor family. But as far as I can remember... They are good provider, making sure there is always food on the table. Decent clothing for our children, and they sent us all to school until all of us finish college. As they always say, yan lang ang mapag, mapamamana namin sa inyo. Well, by God's grace, they got what they desired from us. Indeed, while every earthly father has their own unique gift, talents, good, and excellent personality. But of course, no earthly father is perfect. They too have their own flaws, failures, and weaknesses. But by the grace of God, they are the best that God has given to us to match our personalities and to help us grow. Tandaan po natin, mga anak, you are not around had it not for your parents or your father. You have their DNA. So thank God for your parents. They are the best. That's why the Bible said that we obey and honor our father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Amen? What is the beautiful promise of that verse? That it may go well with you. Okay, you may enjoy long life here on earth. Yan po ang sabi sa Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3. Listen church, while there is no perfect father here on earth, let me tell you and let me share to you about our great and awesome father in heaven. Today's message is about the great love of the father or ang dakilang pag-ibig ng ating ama. What about this great love of a father? It is so great that no one can equal it. Amen? And let me tell you about this truth. Number one, God is our Abba Father. The Lord God in the Bible is your father. Is my father. Yes. He is loving and he is good father. You know, there are many ways to know our Father. You can know Him as our Creator. Amen? Just look around and you will know how great all that He had created. You see the stars, the moon, the sea, the ocean. Lahat po yan ay nilikha ng ating Panginoon. You can know Him also as an omnipotent, all-powerful God who can create things and perform miracles by just His Word. He can heal the sick and bring dead people or things back to life. Amen? Ganun kadakila, powerful ang ating Diyos amang nasa langit. Yes, you can know Him in the Scripture as how you have experienced Him in your life. Church, listen. Different people can give different ideas about who God is. So what is your image about our God? But what does the Bible say about our Father in heaven? For example, in some countries, God is just a unique animal or an insect or plant. To some, He is, you know, one who is seated on His throne with power and might 
ready to judge anyone either to go to heaven or to go to hell. To some, they see God as holy with reverence and fear, with an approachable figure that you cannot talk. He is far up there that you don't want to bother. To some, they picture God as one who is seated on a throne with a long list of all the sins that they've committed or have done wrong. So they pictured God as angry and like a judge ready to curse or punish anyone. So let me ask you personally, who is your God? How do you picture your God every day? How do you deal with God? How, you, how do you talk to Him every day? Good news. There is good news for you. With Jesus Christ, there came a new way to know God. Through Him, we did not just receive a Savior. We were given a Father. Amen? A loving and good Father. Remember, in Matthew chapter 6, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, the very first words he used were, Our Father in heaven. Amen? Aming Diyos amang nasa langit. God in heaven is our Father. Amen, church? Of all the ways he could have told us to relate to God, Jesus said, He is our Father. He is our Father first. He could have said, okay, say this, dear God, but no. He taught us something that when approaching God, okay, He said, our Father in heaven. Okay? His Father is our Father too. You hear the church? He wants us to know that we have a God who is our Father too. And that is the best understanding of who God is. Amen, church. What kind of father is our God? The Bible says that He is a loving father, a father who is uh, approachable, a father who is proud of us, someone who cares for us. Okay, believe me, He is not angry or mad at us, but He is madly in love with us. Amen. Jesus, the Son of God, only could have referred to Him as His Father. But every time He spoke to the people, Jesus said, Your Father, Your Father, Your Father. To Jesus, it is important to Him for us to see it this way and to approach God this way that God is our Abba Father. Amen? Jesus in the Scripture was always telling us many times or is impressing in our heart that His Father is our Father. Ano po ba ang sabi sa John 1.12? That moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible said, Those who believed Him and received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God. Now know that though He is our Creator God, He is a powerful God, He is also our Father. Our God deals with us first as His children. Tayo kanyang mga anak. He is proud of you and He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to talk to you, walks with you, and wants to bless you with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Remember this church. He is our Abba Father who is your constant source of strength. Okay? He protects you. He encourages you. When you are down, He pushes you forward when you feel like giving up someone who cheers you when you are discouraged. That's our Abba Father. He lifts you up when you are down and He is always there when you needed Him most. Yun ang ating amang nasa langit. No, marayli kawe lumaking walang ama or maybe you have an earthly father who is very difficult to please or maybe one who is harsh to you today know that your heavenly father is pleased with you and is proud of you you may have an absentee father but know that you have a father who is always present and will never abandon you 
People of God, sabi sa Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, God said, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. Mga kapatid, maraming mga tao ngayon, they dislike their personality. They criticize themselves because they think they are not good or smart enough like their siblings. Or they think they are not beautiful like their friends. Or they think they are not gifted or talented like their classmates or friends. Mga kapatid, don't think it that way. Or don't be like them. Church, listen, people of God. Your gift, your uniqueness, and everything that you have has been carefully designed into what God calls His masterpiece. You know that you are His prized possession. Remember this, that God created you in His own image. Your Heavenly Father was the one who breathed on you. Don't feel insecure. You are God's child. You are a child of God. You are not an accident. He created you and He has a purpose for your life. In Psalm 139 verse 13 to 14, Bible says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. Hallelujah. Praise God. Again, your gift, your talents, your skills, and everything about you, you know, you have been carefully and wonderfully designed for His glory and honor. You see, you are His masterpiece. Listen, when God looks at you, He sees a masterpiece. Okay? So mga kapatid, church, mga kaibigan, your heavenly Father is so proud of you as His child. Don't you ever, ever question your personality. Amen? Mga kapatid, kaya, alam nyo, there's nothing in you that He did not plan for a purpose. Your Abba Father is so proud of you, okay, and what you have become. Church, your heavenly Father is with you every day, working in you and through you. He is so proud of you as His children, Okay, listen church, imagine this. When you were born, God is there smiling at you. And when you were born again, He is there smiling and embracing you. Amen? Since then, He is always there cheering for you, even in every small triumph that you've made in life. And He also, and He is also with you, encouraging you, when you were down. That is how important you are to God who is also your Abba Father. So church, having said this, mga kapatid, listen, bilang mga anak ng Diyos, huwag kayaan ang jablo na linlangin ka, siraan ka, o wasakin ang buhay mo. Don't let the enemy influence your heart and your ability. Don't let the enemy tear you down because God is with you and He protects you. And He has a wonderful plan for your life. So don't let the enemy have an inch in your heart. Don't let anyone say negative words against you because you are a child of God. Amen? You are His masterpiece. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 says, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example among the believers in speech, love, faith, and purity. Set an example. Listen, mga kapatid, mga kabataan, mga anak, friends, di ko alam kung anong nangyayari sa buhay mo ngayon. I don't know what's going on in your life right now. If you are struggling, if you have problems, or maybe you are experiencing trials now, know that God is with you. Jesus can save you. Know that you are special to God because He is your Abba Father. He knows what you are going through right now. Don't waste your life with nonsense things. 
with worldly things. Your heavenly Father loves you and made you for His purpose and glory. Come humbly before God and He will save you. You can come humbly before your Father now and He can restore the joy of your salvation. He is not angry with you. He cares for you that He wants to save you and He is not mad at you but He is madly in love with you. Church, yes, know that He loves you so much. Number two, this great love of the Father is unconditional. Yes, let's talk about this unconditional love of the Father. You know, in, in Luke chapter 15, here is a story, okay, of the Father's love. Some people said that this is a story of the prodigal son. But to me, this is about the Father's love. Amen? Or the love of the Father. Alam niyo na po ang kwento nito. Okay? But what can we learn here about the Father's love? You see, the Father's heart grieves to see His Son living in the ways of the world. Nasasaktan po ang ating Ama pag nakikita niya ang kanyang mga anak ay wala sa kanyang kalooban. Nagigita po natin yung isang anak dito na kung saan ay pagkatapos niyang tanggapin ang kanyang mana, siya po ay nagpakalayo. Amen? Siya po, winaldas niya ang kanyang pera sa walang kabuluhan. Kaya magikita po natin dito mga kapatid na doon pa man sa mga panahong yon masakit na sa puso ng ama. Mga kapatid, at ito po, this is what will happen if you want to live your own way and neglect God's way. Okay? Sin comes in. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Amen, church? So, ano pa mangyayari sa'yo? You see, if you continue living outside the will of God, destruction. God's wonderful plan for you will be hindered. The pride of life. You see, you know what I mean? Pride, you, know, you keep saying, I don't need God. I don't need anybody. I can do it myself. I'm good. I'm okay. Kaya ko to. Leave me alone. You know what? Yan din po ang sinabi ng anak dito sa story. Okay? So, siya yung umalis na mag-isa. Kasama niya ang mga kaibigan niya. Subalit nung wala na siyang pera, wala na rin ang kanyang kaibigan. Pride. Mga kapatid, sabi ng James 4.6, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. If you humble yourself before God, then He will take over your life. Ano pa pong nangyari sa, sa anak dito? Gutom. Siya ay nagutom physically and spiritually. Tingnan mo, mga kapatid, dahil sa kanyang mga bisyo at dahil sa kanyang pride, You know, siya po ay nasira at mga kapatid at pati ang kanyang relationship with his friends ay nawala din. Mga kapatid, you have a friend in Jesus who will never abandon you. Okay? And He is always with you. Ganun din mga kapatid, kapag lumayo ka kay Lord, pag lumayo ka sa church family mo o sa cell group mo, Okay? Eventually, pag may problema ka, no one will pray for you, no one will help you. Siguro sabihin mo, well, marami namang iba dyan. Yes, pero titiyakin ko, babalik ka rin kay Lord. Amen? Babalik ka rin sa yung church family because, you see, the Lord loves you and He wants you to be with family of believers. Ano pa pong nangyari dito? Poverty and demotion. You see, nakita natin ito sa, sa isang anak. Kawalan ng asenso sa buhay. Imagine who you are in God's company. You see, when you are with God. But now, siya ay naging worker at siya ay wala pang makain. Amen? Naisip niya tuloy ang mga tauhan ng kanyang father. Sabi niya, buti pa doon maraming makain. Mga kapatid, kapag ang bisyo ay dumapo sa iyo, 
Maraming mangyayari sa iyo, mga kapatid. Wala kang asenso sa buhay. Focus on things that has values and that glorifies God. You see, mga kapatid, but there is good news. Kung ikaw man ngayon ay nagsasarili, ikaw man ay nahiwalay sa Diyos, ikaw man ay nagkaroon ng mga bisyo, there is a way out. Do not prolong the agony or your suffering and destruction. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus can save you. God, your Father, can save you out of that situation. Dito makikita natin that the Father is always looking and longing for His Son to come back. Ganyan ang isang ama. Ganyan ang ating Diyos amang nasa langit. Okay? Mag Lumayo ka man, mga kapatid, you know that God will look for you. Okay? Kaya dapat sabi dito sa Bible, sa verse 20, magikita po natin dito na kung saan, sabi dito, But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Wow! Mga kapatid, ganyan ang ating Ama. He has an unconditional love. His love for you is everlasting. Walang hanggan. Walang katapusan. Hindi nagbabago. Ito ang maganda, you see, sa verse 22, magigita natin na yung nire-rehearse ng anak na kanyang pagsisisi. You know, hindi na pinansin ng Ama that while you know, he was re reciting yung kanyang prayer sa kanyang tatay. The father was already busy celebrating. Because the very moment you decide to come to him, the very moment you realize that you need God, mga kapatid, he has already forgiven you and he is not interested about your past sins or about your past life. He settled that already on the cross. The Bible says in Hebrews 8.12, I will forgive their sins and will remember their sins no more. What is important is you were once lost but now found. You are now back in the loving arms of the Father. The Father's love will restore your blessings. What was taken away by the enemy, the Father will restore it back to you. The Father's love, you know, is so beautiful that you always celebrate because He loves you so much. Again, what is your image about God? Church, friends, when you have the revelation and the right image of who God is, like when you have a revelation that He is your Abba Father and that He is not angry with you, He loves you unconditionally, you are secured. You are blessed. You walk with confidence. He allows us to pursue our dreams and gives you hope even in the midst of challenges. The Bible said, If God be for us, who can be against us? Number three, you have direct access to your Father. Yes, because He loves you so much, know that as His child, know that you have direct access to our Father God. Because you are His child, okay? He is your Father. He loves you so much, okay? So He gives you access direct to Him. You see, church, like when you have a need or you are in trouble, you do not need a third party to pray for you. Yes, we pray for each other and that's important too. But as a child of God, He is your Heavenly Father. You can go directly to Him and pray intimately with Him. Amen? Yes. 
You are His beloved. And your prayer is as effective as anyone you think is, is anointed. In Christ, we are all anointed. We pray to the same Father in heaven. And we are all His children. Be assured He hears you. He knows your needs. He knows you by name. He knows the number of your hairs on your head. And He wants to have fellowship with you. In fact, before a word is on your tongue, He knows it already. Okay? Para sa Kanya, hindi pag-aaksaya ang panahong bawat sandaling ginugugol niya para sa iyo. Gaano man sa palagay mo, kaliit ang bagay na iyon. Ito'y mahalaga sa Kanya. Ikaw ay mahalaga sa Kanya. At ang bawat sandaling makasama niya, ito'y napakahalaga sa Kanya. Ang pagkikipag-usap mo sa Kanya ay mas mahalaga. He wants to be involved and that is our Heavenly Father. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Wow, church, because He is your Heavenly Father. You see, your call or your prayer will go directly to Him. Yes, you have direct access to Him. He answers your call right away. He will not put you on hold or your call will not go to voicemail. Amen? Yes, His line for you will not get busy, nor there is no interruption or under repair. Okay? No matter how big or small is your request, He hears you. Naririnig ka niya, kapatid. Okay? That is how loving and gracious our Heavenly Father. Okay? Alam niyo, I heard some Christians say, I think God is not hearing my prayers anymore. It's been a long time and He is not answering my prayers. Have you asked that kind of question before? Friends, prayer is just like talking to your Abba Father. He invites us to have fellowship with Him and He assured us that He hears every beat of your heart. Kaya nga, sabi niya sa verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you. Sabi sa Matthew 21, 22, If you believe and not doubt, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Amen? Kaya minsan ang answer ng Diyos sa atin ay yes, kagad, or no kagad, or wait, or you see, sometimes His answer is already obvious. It's in the Word. Ayaw lang nating pansinin at unawain. Subalit, minsan at kadalasan, ang sagot sa ating panalangin ay nasa kanyang salita. You see, mga kabadid, the Bible tells us to acknowledge God in all our ways. Not just before we eat or drink, but in all areas of our lives. Amen? Whether it's about money, wisdom, decision making, about trips, what course to take, who to marry, or what book to read. Truth is, the Bible said, He knows your need even before you ask Him. You know why? As a father, He just wants to hear from you. He longs to talk to you and to know what's in your heart. Amen? To make sure you are okay. The Bible in Proverbs says, To trust in the Lord with all your heart, and to lean not on your own understanding. Trusting the Lord means waiting on God patiently, waiting on His timing, and waiting in His ways. You may ask, does God cares about my needs? Yes, He does. Does God cares about my work? Yes, He does. Does He cares about my studies? Yes, He does. Does He cares about my tuition fees and allowances? Yes, He does. God cares for you, friends. Your Father concerns about every small detail of your life. In every promotion, success, and triumph, He smiles and celebrates with you. You see, 
what is important to you is also important to Him. However, in every failure and struggle or addiction that becomes a stronghold in your life, He wants to help you manage your life or He wants you to humble yourself before Him and surrender your struggles to Him. You do not need the perfect English or perfect grammar prayer to talk to God. Kahit anong language ang ginagamit mo, God can understand that. Number four, God loves you just as you are. You do not need to perform to get God's attention. The greatest lie the enemy to you is that God is angry with you. That's the greatest lie, okay? He accused you because you failed. You did not perform well in your life and you have not prayed and read the Bible enough. Okay? Kaya nga pinag-aralan po natin ito how to handle accusation in our series about the armor of God. When you are accused and condemned, it's hard for you to approach God, right? But when you have the right mindset, you have the confidence to approach God just as you are. You see, God is pleased with you because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You do not need to perform well to get God's attention or to appease the anger of God. Why? Because Jesus paid it all already on the cross. Okay? You do not need to convince God through your performance to get His attention. You see, remember when Jesus was baptized at the Jordan River before He started His earthly ministry? That moment He came out of water, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. With you I am well pleased, God said. Listen, what is interesting here is that at the time of Jesus' baptism, Jesus has not done any miracle yet. No feeding, no discipleship yet, no raising of the dead yet. But the Father said, He is my beloved Son. With Him I am well pleased. He is proud as a Father. Notice church, Jesus did not win His Father's approval based on performance. His father was pleased with him because of who he was and not of what he has done. Remember this, there is nothing more you could do for him to love you more. And there is nothing you can do for him to stop loving you. Yes, he loves you. His love is eternal. His love is everlasting. His love is constant. It never changes. Because you are His child. It's number five, this love is the greatest love of all. The greatest love story is recorded in the Bible and summed up in this verse, John 3.16. Amen? Let me paraphrase it. Sabi dito, Because God, our Father in heaven, loved us so much, the Father gave us His Son, His only Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross to settle and pay the penalty of our sins. And He promised that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Well, church, this may be a very familiar verse to you. But this verse, you know, still amazes me up to this day. Every day, as I think about this verse, as I think about His love, as I think about His unconditional love, as I think of my Father's love, well, I hope you get a fresh revelation here that God our Father was the one who initiated to love us, that while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated His love by sending His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. You see, the first time you ask for forgiveness, the mercy come rushing through. That's how deep is the Father's love for us. 
You know, that's why when Brother Roman and Doc Rolly asked me about three important verses to put inside our church office, this verse, John 3.16, is non-negotiable. Why? Because it speaks about the unconditional love of God. Our Heavenly Father, God loves us so much. And I pray that this truth will speak to many people. Will excite you every day also. Kaya nga, if you truly understand this love for you, what Jesus Christ has done to you, if you get this as a revelation from the Holy Spirit, then that will give you also the power to love your God in return. And by God's grace, you see, your desire to honor Him because He is a good and faithful God. You see, then your worship is automatic. Your service, your giving, tithing, praying, helping others, reading God's word, sharing to others, this becomes a joy to you. Okay, why? Because you're excited about His love. You're excited about every opportunity to do something for your Abba Father. See God as your Father. You know what, church? The reason why many people today, even Christians still living in guilt and in discouragement and in condemnation is because they only know God as a God who punished them. They only God as a God who is still angry with them. Church, let me tell you. God is our Father. He loves you. The problem is many people don't see God as a gracious, faithful, loving, heavenly Father. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We will not come boldly to his throne if we think the one sitting there will show us a long list of what we have done wrong and to punish us of our sins. We come boldly to him when we know and see that the one sitting there is God who is our loving, faithful, heavenly father. Friends, know that there is God who is your father and who loves you so much. Will you accept him as your Lord and Savior today? Will you believe in Jesus? Will you invite him to come into your life? Say this prayer right now. Say this prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to pay the penalty of my sins. I acknowledge I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, that you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you that the Bible says, I am now a child of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let me continue to pray right now for everyone. Raise your hand. Let me just pray this prayer of declaration, especially to the fathers out there. In Jesus' name, I declare that you are blessed with God's supernatural strength, wisdom, and clear direction for your life. I declare that you're blessed with a strong body, with a healthy and strong immune system. I declare that you're blessed with creativity, with courage, with ability, and with abundance. I declare that you're blessed with a great family, godly children, 
and in-laws, with good friends, with good help, and with faith, favor, and fulfillment. I declare that you're blessed with success, with supernatural strength, with promotion, and with divine protection. I declare that you are blessed with an obedient heart and with positive outlook on life. I declare that you are blessed in the city, you are blessed in the country, you are blessed when you go in, you are blessed when you come out. I declare now that everything you put your hands to do is going to prosper and succeed. I pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, church, thank you for joining our worship celebration today. To all our fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Please share this message to other people. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you again next week for another anointed, grace-filled, and life-changing Word of God. You are blessed and you are loved by our Heavenly Father. Happy Father's Day sa'yo. Thank you pa kasi uh, hindi mo naranasan na uh, makasama ang iyong tatay o iyong na, ina eh, nagawa mo pa rin maging mabuti rin ama sa amin at pinalakay mo pa rin kami dahil napaka-discarte mo. Thank you pa kasi ikaw ang tatay ko. You're the best kahit uh, hindi ka nakapagtapos o ng pag-aaral pero ginawa mo yung best mo. Ginawa ka, gumawa ka ng discarte para mabuhay kami. Thank you pa. Happy Father's Day. Thank you and I love you and God bless you more. Hi Daddy, happy Father's Day. Uh, thank you for being a good role model to us. Thank you dahil, um, thank you for teaching us how to drive, how to play the instruments for exposing us uh, in the music ministry. And pati na rin sa construction kasi yun yung profession namin ngayon. And uh, thank you for introducing Christ to our family. So yun, happy Father's Day Dad. Father's Day and God bless to all fathers of Community of Grace, especially to our Apple Bottom Genie Father. Um, thank you for all your hard work and for supporting us every step of the way. Remember, God got your back and we got your back. We love you always. Happy, happy Father's Day to all fathers. We love you and God bless you. On your father's love, especially when it's happy, happy Father's Day to all of our tatas and our compres family. May God continue to bless you more and bless the works of your hands. And of course, to my number one papa, pinaka pogi kong papa, Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you for always encouraging me, for always praying for me, and for always believing in me. And very thankful to God na ikaw ang aking papa. I love you so much and may God continue to bless you all the days of your life. I love you, Papa. Happy Father's Day to our loving, hardworking, and ever so goofy father. I love you, Daddy. Happy, happy Father's Day. And happy Father's Day din po sa lahat ng Comprace Dads. We love you and God bless you many, many more because you deserve it. Hello, Mama, Daddy, Papa, Happy Father's Day! To the leader of the band, Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Thank you for the years of guidance and fun that you gave. Happy Father's Day sa lahat ng tatay, papa, at daddy out there. Especially sa aming Papa Alex na napaka-loving and hardworking. Hindi na namin kailangan mag-enroll sa driving school dahil nandiyan ka sa aming buhay. God bless you po!
was I there enough? Enough to make it.